Sometimes in games, the most mundane of actions end up being strangely enjoyable. While no one will play these games because of these segments and can often be little more than ancillary mechanics or distractions, the action ends up being strangely fun regardless. Here's a list of 14 such things that shouldn't be fun, but for some reason are. Camp Chores, Red Dead Redemption 2. The Vanderlyn Gang's camp for a large part of Red Dead Redemption 2 is an excellent place to just hang out. From picking up quests and side quests, to playing some mini games and various activities, to just chatting with your fellow gang members, there's a lot to do in the camp. One other thing you can do is, well, chores. Picking up a loft of hay and slowly walking it across the camp to horses' feeding spots, filling up a bucket of water and bringing it to Pearson's table, chopping a bunch of firewood, it's all the very definition of mundane and really doesn't require much activity on your part as the player, but for some reason every now and again it feels oddly fun to do just a bunch of chores around the camp. Of course, the Deadeye bonuses, for whatever reason, are an obvious boost. Cooking Food – The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Breath of the Wild's focus on survival mechanics is one of the many ways it differs from its predecessors. It's not a survival game by any means, but it does have a few survival mechanics that play an important role. Cooking food and experimenting with all of the resources and materials you have at your disposal is quite important because of the bonuses or weather resistance effects or additional health the results might lead to, but also it's a strangely fun activity to indulge in. Randomly throwing various materials together into a dish and seeing what final products you come up with is oddly enjoyable, way more than it sounds at any rate. Rowing the Boat – God of War A good chunk of God of War is spent just rowing your boat around the Lake of the Nine, the hub area for the game. Very easily such a task could have become repetitive and frustratingly boring, but God of War makes use of its strength in writing and characters to prevent that from happening. These boat rides are often accompanied by some smartly written conversations between Kratos, Atreus, and later on, Mimir. While Mimir's own knack for storytelling and just his personality in general also make each conversation worth looking forward to. Lab Puzzles – Spider-Man We get it, when we're playing a game based on Spider-Man, we want to play as, well, Spider-Man, and anything that cuts into that feels like lost or wasted time. Insomniac's open-world title is amazing, but it has some moments that do just that. But occasionally, going back to Peter's lab and doing some of the lab puzzles manages, for the most part, to be a nice little distraction. You can always skip the puzzles without ever losing the potential rewards, in fact, so they're never really shoved down your throat, but a handful of these short but fun puzzles every couple of hours can often be surprisingly enjoyable. Climbing that ladder, Metal Gear Solid 3. Metal Gear has done a lot of crazy, admirably bold stuff over the years. It's what the franchise is built on. In fact, with Metal Gear Solid 3 being the game, that some such moments stand out more than most others in the series. And the ladder definitely ranks among them. That ridiculously long ladder, which you see Snake climbing for upwards of two minutes, you have nothing to do but hold up on your analog stick the entire time. But the entire sequence of Snake climbing that ladder is accompanied with the Snake Eater song playing in the background. It's weird and shouldn't be fun, but it's awesome. Catching Bugs – Animal Crossing Picking out any single activity from the Animal Crossing games for a feature such as this one is tough, because the entire series is built around the mundane. You plant trees, you catch bugs, you go fishing, you dig up fossils. It's all utterly simplistic, and viewed in isolation should be completely dull, but it all works together fantastically. Bug catching in Animal Crossing, however, can often be good enough to stand on its own. It's hypnotically fun, and catching all of the rarest bugs and selling them back in town for large amounts of money to then upgrade your house and town in New Leaf can be a dangerously addictive loop. Farming – Stardew Valley Much like Animal Crossing, Stardew Valley is a game that is built around a collection of mundane activities, though it does have some decidedly not-so-mundane stuff to do as well. First and foremost, it is a game where you build up and manage your farm, and while activities such as tilling the soil, planting seed, watering your plants, and then harvesting them are mundane by definition, they collectively form an oddly addictive and compelling loop. So much so that you can easily lose dozens upon dozens of hours being happily stuck in that loop. Brushing Your Teeth – Heavy Rain Though Heavy Rain is a game that features a harrowing and eventful final act, it starts out slow, setting the foundation in place as it introduces us to its protagonists, one of whom is Ethan Mars, who starts out as a family man. We get to see his normal family life, and as him, we do everything from pouring juice to waking up in the morning and brushing our teeth. 
When it launched, Heavy Rain banked quite a bit on how it made use of the PS3's limited motion controls in its quick-time events, and it even managed to use that while brushing your teeth. It shouldn't have been fun, but oddly enough, it was. I mean, it's definitely better than Press X to Jason, that's for sure. Building the House, Red Dead Redemption 2 This section contains spoilers. If you haven't finished Red Dead Redemption 2, skip over to the next entry. Still here? All right, let's get to it. The epilogue in Red Dead Redemption 2 is surprisingly good. It's long, deliberately paced, and ties up the story wonderfully. And one of the most memorable sequences in the entire epilogue is when we, as John, build his entire house from scratch with the help of Charles and Uncle, the Lumbago poster boy. The very same house and ranch at Beecher's Hope that we saw in the first Red Dead Redemption game. And it's an excellent sequence, set to one of the best songs in the game's soundtrack. It is essentially a montage of the three aforementioned characters hammering in nails or erecting wooden structures or tiling the roof, showing the entire process in the best way possible. Going Bowling, GTA 4 Bowling isn't, of course, a mundane activity by any means, but the bowling minigame in GTA 4 is enjoyable enough that it doesn't qualify as boring. But if you keep giving in to Roman's incessant need to call you up every few minutes and invite you to go bowling with him, which you very well might because, well, it's bowling and it's fun, you're going to be doing a lot of bowling. And sure, as I said, it's still fun, but the minigame is not accomplished enough to hold up under too much playtime. Watching Movies, GTA 5 there's a vast amount of things players can do in GTA 5's open world, and while a lot of them can qualify for a list such as this one, hell even the yoga minigame can be fun at times, the best mundane side activity has to be going to the cinemas in Los Santos to watch movies. Just sitting down, putting down your controller, and watching a movie inside of a game should be pretty boring by all accounts, but these shows end up being surprisingly enjoyable in GTA 5. The remaining entries in this feature don't pertain to any game in particular, but are instead more general activities that can be found in various games. Reading unnecessary in-game material Have you ever spent way more time than you should on activities like reading all the emails in Deus Ex, or the newspaper in Red Dead Redemption? It's not something you have to do, the game doesn't ever really direct you to do it, it's just there. But reading this stuff can be a lot of fun for many, many reasons. For world building, for character development, for adding context to the story, or just being well written and enjoyable on its own. Fishing Fishing has for some reason been a prominent side activity in games for decades. Franchises like Zelda, Far Cry, Grand Theft Auto, Pokemon, Red Dead Redemption, and Final Fantasy are just a few of the many, many examples. And for some reason, it can be a lot of fun at times. It's a lot of waiting around, which intermittently leads to a short minigame, or even just the press of a button at the right time. So it shouldn't be anything but boring. But it is. It's boring, but it's fun. Kind of like real fishing. Opening up taps in Hitman Agent 47 can be quite the smart operative. He can take down his opponents in several different ways, whether it be choking the hell out of someone, pushing someone over the ledge, or disguising himself as a waiter and killing his enemies with the help of poison. But nothing gives us more satisfaction than entering a restroom and luring your opponent by opening up taps. It's an extremely mundane task, but fun nonetheless. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.